So the tarp you see behind me is the Underground Quilts Hex Hanger. It's the 11 foot wide body and I've got it in the 20D Sil Poly. Uh, and I went with two colors that I really like. I like the Moroccan blue. Uh, it's the same color that I've got on a couple other things that I've got right now. And then really to, to make it pop, we went with the lime green, uh, just the, the trim is all lime green, as you can see here. Um, very, very distinct color, very cool color. Let's see the underground quilts logo there. But this side of the tarp I have set up in pretty much storm mode. You know, I could go a little bit lower, but because it's wide, it really can get low to the ground or you can extend it out probably to fit a good two hammocks underneath. So right now, here's how I have it set up out here uh, for this trip. This was the first trip I ever have brought Dylan on. Uh, I've got it strung up with a continuous ridge line. I've used the toggles on the continuous ridge line and they run through two split rings and it has to run through both of them uh, to disperse the load evenly. Now one really unique feature of this tarp over any other tarp I've used is this sewn ridge line. If you look at it, uh, it stands up vertically. You can see that my fingers disappear behind it because it stands up vertically and so it seals the the seam there in between it kind of sandwiches it in and then on the bottom side it is seam sealed uh, beautiful job on all of it this really does even without seam sealing it this will provide some level of protection there to uh, to keep from having any any leaks so at each of the tie out points there are the double split rings we can come down here and see I've got the double split rings on each of the tie outs. What that does is it disperses the load evenly so there's no pressure points on any of the tie outs. Uh, if you take a look at the stitching, it is impeccable the entire way. One of the things that you'll notice is the spacing um, between the outside edge and the first line and then the second line. They are absolutely even all the way around this tarp. Uh, I've taken a very close look at it and there are no places I could find any workmanship problems with this whatsoever. Uh, beautiful, beautiful tarp. I got to meet both Paul and Missy while I was out at Hankon and got a chance to see some of their some of their work and as far as under quilts go and tarps, all top-notch, top-notch products uh, as you would expect from a lot of our, our cottage vendors here in the, the hammock and outdoors industry just great great people and great products and i decided this time to use the continuous ridge line that underground quilts offers and it uses these aliens and i saw this setup out at hankon and you can see all these lines all over this and you know on both sides the lines just kind of all over it really had me confused as to how it worked and so Right after I was questioning it, Paul actually put up a video that showed exactly how it works. And once you uh, once you figure it out, it's actually pretty easy, relatively simple to do, and a quick setup. Uh, really prussic knots with the toggles so that you can slide them along the line uh, because it is a nice slippery line. It works really well, and you can really cinch it down and tighten it to keep the uh, the tightness of the tarp. Now. If you do it beforehand, it makes it a little bit easier before you've got it all uh, guide out. So for the guy lines on this one, I am using some reflective cord and some Dutch tarp hooks. Uh, and the tarp hooks actually work really well with the split rings. You can see that they will connect right to each other. Um, no problem whatsoever there and still make the adjustments. And I've got some Easton stakes that are staking this one out. So last night there was no, no rain. So really didn't get a good chance to test this out. 
So we will have to set it up and get a good test of this with some water coming down on it and just make sure there's no, no leaks anywhere and make sure that the uh, fabric being the Silpoly should not soak, should not absorb any of the, the water. So that's one of the things I'm going to test out and look for. Uh, right now it's not completely taut just because I was messing with the ridge line, but I've got it set up in porch mode on this side. You can see how I do that. I just run it all the way out to the end of the, the hookworm, uh, wrap it around my stake or around my, the top of my trekking pole. Trekking pole is stabbed into the ground and then down to my stake. Uh, and that keeps it pretty good all night long. So this was the setup we used last night with, uh, I was in my chameleon over here. My son was under the, under the tarp and we just kind of hung out. Good night. And this is a Silpoly tarp. So, uh, whereas on some of my other tarps, I've used some elastic shock cord here, uh, or coming from the, the pullouts on this one, it's not necessary because it's not going to um, stretch after you get it set up. I am using the Dutch hookworms and using the two split rings that come with all the underground tarps. Now for the ridge line, I did go with the continuous ridge line and I went with the aliens, uh, the continuous ridge line with aliens from underground quilts and I opted for the toggles and you place both the one toggle through both of the split rings on the tarp ridge line. And then it's got the Prusik knot that you simply slide to position. And <laughs> I've seen the video on how to do this one. Um, and when I first saw it, I thought, wow, how do you do that? Look at all those lines going across there. But actually, once you've done it a couple of times, it actually becomes pretty easy. Now, right now I have it set up with a hammock underneath it. And this is an 11 foot hammock. And as you can see, uh, I've got a few inches on this side and it isn't completely perfectly centered. So I've got uh, almost a foot, uh, eight inches on this side, um, just to show how much, how much room there is there on this tarp. So the 11 foot tarp will fit an 11 foot hammock. Even though on their website, Underground Quilts does suggest that if you are using an 11 foot hammock to use the 12 foot, and the 12 foot will give you more coverage, that's, that's definitely a fact. Um, but I figured I would go with this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and put up the dimensions and weight of this tarp right here. So there you go. Nice tarp. Let's take a look at it from the inside. So I really like the Moroccan blue. I've been using it on, on several different things lately. Uh, it is the overcover for my Dutchwear Chameleon. It is the inner layer of my uh, hammock gear incubator under quilt. It is uh, on the inner layer of the Terrapin Outfitters hatchling that I'm using. I just like the color. One of the cool things is when you're laying in the hammock, now today is not a great example because it is a nice, beautiful, cloudless day here in Charleston, South Carolina. But when you look up, you get a nice blue above you. Uh, blocks out a little bit of the light, but not, not all of it. But it creates a nice blue um, environment kind of to lay in and, and enjoy. But with it being a sunny day, how do you test how waterproof it is, how water resistant, whether or not it soaks up, you know, because Silpoly is not supposed to soak up water. It's supposed to really deflect it off, let it shed and not, not soak it up and become waterlogged. So Sil Nylon will become waterlogged, will wet out. Um, and so that's something you've got you to consider. Now these things are definitely waterproof. Uh, being the, the sill poly and being seam sealed. So I suspect it's going to do well. Why don't we find out? All right, let's check it out. 
Okay, so for the first part of this waterproof test, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take the hose, since it's such a nice day, and we're just gonna make it rain. And you can see that the water is really just coming right off of there. Well, we hope it's not coming through. We hope it's not getting on the inside, but uh, we'll let this go for a couple minutes. You can see that that upper uh, green has become a darker green as it, it does start to get wet. But even if it gets saturated, you know, there is the sill poly sandwiched in between it and uh, it is seam sealed. So let's check inside. So let's see. All right, looking inside, you can see that it's just beat it up on the outside. I don't see any spots. No, it is completely dry. I'm just gonna walk down through the length of it, checking it out. That looks pretty good. So I guess that'll bring us to phase two of this test, which is being inside while it's raining. Let's do it. So wow, it is, uh, it's really coming down out there. Got the rain just beating down on the tarp. You can see it hitting the tarp and running down. Oh, it's pulling up down there at the, the bottom where it comes out. But I'm staying warm. I'm staying dry. Maybe not warm, but staying dry. I don't have any, any UGQ quilts on me. I don't have a, uh, a nice flight jacket or a Zeppelin underneath me. So, you know, I'm not. I'm not necessarily warm right now, but I'm definitely staying dry. You can see it's it's not coming through at all. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna let it go for a little while. Lay out here. Enjoy the sound of a, a nice rain on my tarp. I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. One thing I will say is I really do like the wide body. Uh, I've got it pitched pretty high for where my where my hammock is right now. You can see the gap there. Uh, so I could bring this down quite a bit lower. And it's actually kind of low to the ground right there. So it could go quite a bit lower. And if I don't go quite as wide of a pitch, uh, you can go really into a, a pretty good storm mode. As long as you take into account the direction of the wind, uh, you can really make this work well in a, in a pretty good storm. Um, you can also do porch mode and have a pretty good sized porch out there. I think if you went a little bit shallower, uh, maybe even tying it off to some, some poles, you could get two hammocks underneath here if you had trees set up properly to do that. Uh, I think that's definitely something you could do. So I think this is a, a great, great option for anyone who's out there looking for a tarp. I will say, you know, it's a pretty steady rain I've got coming down on me right now, and it is a whole lot quieter uh, more peaceful than than the Cuban fiber that I've been using because I have been using the Cuban fiber tarp now for a while and the one downfall is it does sound like beating on a drum. Uh, it is a taut pitch with a plastic material that that really is loud when when you get a pretty good heavy rain coming down. So uh, that's something to something to think about and something to consider. But really, great tarp. And the size that it packs down to, it's actually, I think, a little bit smaller than an Algene bottle. So it's, it packs down really, really nicely. So what are my thoughts of this tarp? Well, I'll be completely honest. I like it. I like it a lot. The, uh, the Sil Poly is great. I've had trouble before with Sil Nylon with it misting. And the hydrostatic pressure of this tarp and the Sil Poly that's used uh, is good enough that it shouldn't have any of those problems. Uh, reports out there are that the Sil Poly doesn't have that problem. It doesn't stretch like the Sil Nylon does, which would result in needing to redo the stakes, tighten it up, tension it up. Uh, so really you can set it and forget it once you get to camp. Having used it in camp at least one time, uh, it works out perfect. Set it up in porch mode, provided a nice, nice cover there. No dew settled on anything underneath it. Uh, Having it out here and running the water test, you know, I think that it's it's going to perform great, and I will keep 
taking this thing out on these trips with me, testing it out, really putting it through its paces and seeing just how great a tarp it really is. Uh, we'll probably try at some point to put two, two hammocks underneath it if we can find the right tree set up and uh, really report back on just how versatile it is, how well it works and the ridge line. Uh, the ridge line is 27 feet long so it gives you a pretty good range of tree options there. Uh, I was a little bit wider, probably about 17 feet wide uh, at the last campsite that we did. Had a pretty small tree, probably a little bit bigger than the 4x6 that I've got over here, but on this end I had a pretty good sized tree that I went around and it worked out worked out great. So um, Ridgeline is working out well. Uh, like I said, the first time had to figure out how the, uh, how the cord went through the alien to get it to tension and then lock. But after the first time, uh, it's been a no-brainer. Haven't had to refer to anything, any manuals or anything, and got it, got it going. So underground quilts, hex hanger, 11-foot wide-body tarp. Check it out.